Hello everyone, welcome to Easy Linguistics, and this is part three of morphological analysis. So without further ado, let's get started. So we have the first exercises here. We have a language which is called Dutch, and the, the following infinitive and past verb forms are found in Dutch. So we have the root, and then we have the infinitive of this root, and then the past participle of the root. Uh, so the question, the first question, with reference to the morphological processes of prefixing, suffixing, infixing, and circumfixing, and the specific morpheme involved. First, state the morphological rule for forming infinitives in Dutch. Second, state the morphological rule for forming the Dutch past participle form. So these prefixing, suffixing, infixing, circumfixing um, are actually different morphological processes. So, for example, in prefixing, we just add a, you know, an affix uh, before the root. We add it before the root. Um, in infixing, we add it in the middle of the root. In circumfixing, we have um, an affix which is divided and which also divides the root into, um, into two. And uh, then we have, um, yes, that's all the, the different. We have also, uh, for example, transfixing. Um, inter, interfixing, um, interfixation actually, but we are not going to um, see them now. So we are also we are we are only concerned with these um, these specific um, you know morphological processes. So the first question is: state the morphological rule for forming infinitives in Dutch. So what is the rule for forming infinitives in Dutch language? So if we know, if you notice, we have here the list of roots in Dutch and then the infinitives. So in order to figure out what morpheme is or what morpheme is needed in order to form infinitives in Dutch, we have to see the you know the changes that occur uh, when we have a root and when we have an infinitive. So the root we have, for example, the word wandel or wandel in Dutch, and in, in the infinitive form we have added this en. The same for do, we have added this en to. Uh, we have this word also, and we have added this en. This is the new morpheme whenever we convert or whenever we form an infinitive in Dutch. So the first question, or the answer to the first question, say the morphological rule for forming infinitives in Dutch. This en is actually, um, suffixing it is suffixing this so the morphological process um, you know involved in this uh, informing infinitives in Dutch is suffixation so the, the rule would be like this root plus en gives us infinitive This is the, the rule for, for forming infinitives in Dutch language. The second question, state the morphological rule for forming the Dutch past participle form. So now we have to figure out what morpheme or affix is needed in order to uh, form past participle in Dutch language. We will have to do the same thing as we did with uh, infinitives. So we have to see or to compare the root when before and after we form the past participle so this is the root when we haven't um you know formed past participle yet and this is the root when we form the past participle so what changes did they occur uh, when forming past participle in dutch so we added this ge and we also added this D at the end of the word, GE, and this D at the end of the word, the same for the, the third uh, word, D. And this, this is not suffixation, this is not infixing or prefixing, it is actually circumfixing. So circumfixing is, circumfixation is actually just a morphological process whereby 
an affix divides the root and it is, and is itself uh, divided into suffixes and prefixes. So this circumfix is divided into a prefix G, -A -G -E and a suffix D. So say the morphological rule for forming the Dutch past participle. So in order to, to form past participle in Dutch, we should just add this G plus root plus D. And this gives us past participle. So this is the answer to the second question, the morphological rule that accounts for past participle formation. So this is as far as the first exercise is concerned. So we have seen um, two different morphological processes, circumfixation and suffixation. So in order to form infinitives in Dutch, we use um, um, suffixation as a morphological process. And in order to form past participle in Dutch language, we used uh, circumfixation in order to form it. And these are the rules that account for, their, uh, for this formation. So let's move now to the second exercise. Read carefully the following data from someone, then answer the questions. So we have a list of words here. We have he wishes, they wish, third, um, third uh, masculine pronoun, and then we have the third plural pronoun. So the first, the first, the first, uh, the first question: What morphological process is illustrated in the data? So to to move from he to he, what morphological process did we use? to do that. So we have man, mano. So what we have to do the same thing as we did with, um, you know, the first exercises. We compared the root to infinitives and past participle and we saw what changes did they occur when we, you know, we transit uh, from root to infinitive and from infinitive uh, or from root to past participle. And so we are going to do the same here. So we have to see he wishes just like this, and then we are going to see when we replace this he with they, what changes do they occur? So here we have mano. So this is here is the word ma no. If you notice, we have this na added to uh, in the middle of the word, and it's not just added; it is duplicated because we also have this. Na morpheme in this word. So in order to transit or in order to convert this who wishes to they wish in some some way in language, we just duplicate this um, this last syllable. I would say the penultimate syllable, actually the penultimate syllable, which is na. So what morphological process is illustrated in the data? So the, the morphological process known, uh, known for duplicating um, words, parts of words, is reduplication. So reduplication, this is, redu this is the morphological process that is used in this language in order to convert he wishes to they wish. Third person pronoun to third plural pronoun. So reduplication is just a morphological uh, process whereby um, a morpheme is duplicated or part of a morpheme is duplicated. And when the whole morpheme is duplicated, we call this complete reduplication. And when we have just a part of the morpheme that is duplicated, just, in, just uh, as the case in this uh, language, we didn't uh, duplicate the whole morpheme, the whole word. We just duplicated this uh, this syllable in a, and it, this is called partial reduplication. So now the second question: What is someone for they travel and he sings? So we have he travels. So we want to convert it to they travel. So what we should do just sa 
the Saba, and then we have to duplicate this this va Saba Saba va li. So Saba va li is in someone is the trouble. Now we want to we have now to uh, convert this he things to they thing. So we have he things. We have here they thing. And we want it to convert we want to convert it to reverse it to he sing he sings as you can see this PE is duplicated and so we have to get rid of one it becomes now P PC P See, this is he thinks in this language. So that's all for today. Thank you so much for your attention. See you next time.